Hello and welcome back to part two of the Electrolux 500 um, motor removal video. As you can see from this, we are just about to start the reassembly, and uh, this video is mainly um, requested by Dorian from Hooverlux. I hope he's enjoying it so far. I know you seem to enjoy my um, videos for some reason. And we're going to now start by putting the motor back in and um, then reassembling the cleaner. So as we can see, it is um, probably going to be about half an hour job until we get it all back together again. So we'll focus down and we will uh, recommence with the reassembly. So here, as we can see, was the motor which we took out on the, uh, the last video. I'm going to put the fan case seal back on the end of it. like so. And we're going to bring our housing back in. So um, this is the, uh, the base of the hood. So we're going to now drop the motor back into the case and we can see here that we've got a key on the bottom of the rubber mounting which will engage into this part here. So we can lower the motor down into the housing. And uh, that's absolutely wonderful how that's gone down in there. Right, okay, so the uh, motor's now back in position and that's how it sits in, like so. And uh, we can now join the two halves of the cleaner back together again. So we'll put our bearing, our, uh, our foam gasket back onto here. And then we can put our rear part of the cleaner. In fact I'll leave that out just for the minute because that can go in a little bit later on it just keeps dropping off otherwise. So as from here we can put our this is the part which uh, clamps the cable down essentially. The camera can it see? Yeah and it's raised back up slightly I think. There we go. So we're going to put this back onto the cable like so. And that basically then pushes down into that slot which I showed earlier. So what we're going to be doing is pushing it down, if I can do this with one hand. Into there, like so. Okay, so that, that's what holds the cable steady. And then we can reattach the cable, remembering that uh, brown went onto this terminal. Blue went onto that terminal, and the white one goes onto this terminal here. That's a little bit more fiddly, that one is. So there we go, push that down. So that's the motor actually wired back up, and it's very simple on these, isn't it? Uh, right, from this point, we can put our rubber gasket back on. I think we can put the rubber gasket back on from this point which is that part there, and to do that I'm just going to put this back up on the top make sure the... Uh... that's better right, so am I going to have to... yeah... Um... no, I'm not am I, that'll actually go in perfectly as it is so we can feed our rubber gasket all the way around Okay, like so. It's just pushing down into here. And then into there. Right, now what did we have on from that stage? I think it was the, um, the brush roll belt now, wasn't it? We need to just put that on the spindle. Um, that will just go in here. Then we can put our wheels back in, the front wheels. So they will go in they go in that? Yes, I think that's how they go in. 
they just seem to sit in uh, at the moment or do, do I have to put them under the yeah I've got to make sure the wheels go in before the rubber seal so what we have to do is just pull that rubber seal back slightly from here this end and then slot the wheels into their little seatings so again I should have put the wheels on before I put the rubber gasket in but never mind we've done it now now push the rubber gasket back down Come on, go in. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it. Rubber gaskets, they're a pain in the bum sometimes to get reseated. I'm sure you find that, don't you, Dorian? You sometimes have a bit of a uh, bit of a uh, bit of a problem with the old rubber. Right. So that's the front wheels. Uh, what we have? What do we have next? What do we have next? I wonder to myself. I think it might be the actual motor housing that we go on next. Um, no, there's one spring that has to go on after. These two here, those are for the wheels. Just making sure I've got nothing else that needs to go inside there before I put the motor housing back on the bottom. So. Before I put this on, because obviously these here are going to form the other side of the the lock to hold this onto here. So this is when I would put my little foam, uh, whatever they call it, felt gasket back in. And then I would lower my motor cover back over those felt gaskets. And it's going to be a case of then fettling it down. Because it might not be quite at the right. You'll feel a little bit of resistance when you're pushing it down, basically. I think that's really because the rubber um, fan case seal is pushing and seating down into this part. So sometimes it won't go in quite very smoothly. There we go. So basically it's just having to engage there and there and click into position here. How well can that be seen? Yeah that's alright, you can see that. So there we go, that is now back on. And then we need to put our screws back in. So we're going to be putting one, two, three, four, Five, six, and there's the seventh one which is down here. Now that might be a little bit more of a pig to do, and I don't know where my other pliers are. Oh, I know where I know where they are. Here's my pliers. Now I'm going to get this screw onto the pliers. Without dropping it, they're a bit of a pain. And then lower it down into that little screw hole down here. That's it. Then I can do that one at first, I think. And then I'll do the one on the opposite corner here. This one, and let's provide a little bit stiff. And there we go, there on that one. I knew you'd have had it done by now, Dorian. I'll bet because you've got your new Bosch screwdriver. One of the days I will go to B and Q and get myself another one. Uh, and that one into there. And that one into there. So 
So that's all our motor housing now done up. Then we can put the little spring, which is this, back onto the wheel. So it'll go onto the back of here. I think it will go on that way, won't it? And then I can put the other hole into the little hole down there. So that's the spring on the wheels. And just to make sure that that little height operating, that adjuster operates just okay now with that. So the next stage, I think, we will um, put the, you know, what else have we got now? We've got the uh, hose, haven't we? This is going to need to be um, manipulated back in, isn't it? This hose. So I was going to put a little bit of uh, washing up liquid on this just to make it uh, go in a little bit easier. Hopefully this will work. What that does, it just lubricates the... Uh, I'll put a little bit of washed up liquid around the edges of the rubber so that that will push nicely, hopefully, into here. And it does. There we go. Well, that was a lot easier getting in with some washed up liquid on, so that's the, uh, the key to that. And then we can put the retainer back on there. And the retainer goes in, there's a long one, a long one and a short one. The long one goes in facing this way, basically. So that goes in like so. I don't think it'll go in the other way around, to be honest. So, let's just move it a bit closer. We're going to basically put the two screws back in here, and uh, I think this, these were the two screws, weren't they? This is going to hold our hose assembly back in. two screws into the hose, so that's nice and secure in there now. Mm -hmm. Great and lovely. Now, I can probably put the brush roll back on. Here it is, the brush roll. So we'll get one end of the belt. I'm not actually going to re-put the belt on it because this isn't actually being used at the moment. In fact, no, I might do actually, I might do a daily clean with this tomorrow, or uh, maybe the day after. Uh, so I'll put the brush roll belt on it for now, and then when I've done the daily clean with it, which I'm not doing today, but I might do it sometime this week, I'll leave this belt on, save me to take the sole plate off again, won't it? So I'll engage that, engage the brush roll. Put the other end in. pull our rubber uh, trim back over because the rubber trim actually stops that from coming out if you notice there we go that's if yours has even got a rubber trim on because some of these the rubber trims have perished and dropped off so at this point what I can do is just to test that and make sure that that comes on now and works so I shall put it in Doesn't that, doesn't that run absolutely lovely? It does, doesn't it? You know, this is 34 years old and it still runs like an absolute dream, that motor does. Very lucky to have this machine, it's in, it's in beautiful condition. 
They even got its cable still intact. So, there we go. I wondered why it started off really slow then, and then I remembered it's the electronic control one, and it, it's, it's on minimum. So now what we'll do is we will fit our back wheels and our sole plate back on. So, this is the sole plate, here's the wheels, and in order to do that I need to first of all fit the back pedals. And these have two little sliding pins inside. I think if I can Yeah, okay. So let's just make sure is that the one where oh no you see the springs now need to go back on there, don't they? And I can't quite remember. Where the springs went round. Do they go around there. I'm sure so, I'm going to soon find out because if I've done this wrong. Hmm, yeah, I think. I think that's right, isn't it? I'll soon find out anyway. Let's just put the other one back on. I should have noted that really, how far those stuck out from there. I think that's right. But I haven't have been known to be wrong on quite a few occasions, so... Let's put our back wheels back into there, into that slot. And then, the springs will go back in. Essentially like that, won't they? I think that's how they go. Sure that's how they go. Or does it go on that side? Uh, no, I'm, that, that's how they go, isn't it? Because the marks are on there. Right, let's put the other one on as well. So that one will go over the top of there, over that peg. That one's being a little bit awkward, isn't it? Right. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's it. We can see that on the camera there. That is the uh, that is, seems to be the way that you have your little peg sticking out further from that side, and you don't have it hardly sticking out from that side. So it looks basically like that. And then our spring locates on like so. Right. Let's put the um, let's put the sole plate back on it now, shall we? Uh, Making sure we've got no more other parts here that I've got to go back in. I think it's just the sole plate that's got to go on now. So that is what we'll do. First of all, I will put my hose back underneath here. Can we see that? Yeah, hose back underneath. Into there. Do the clamp back up. And then we can push the sole plate back down and get our sole plate screws. Uh, I think I needed to use my little screwdriver, didn't I, to do these up. Right. 
There we go. Something doesn't quite look right here. Unless it's just the way I'm looking at it. Just have a quick look down there. Well, maybe it is then. It just looked like one wheel was further out than the other. No, maybe it, maybe it is. But maybe it does go like that. Huh. Right. Well, what I'll do, put it down on the floor, and we'll just give it a quick push round in here. So I shall just. Um, that and we'll just um, see if it works properly. Okie dokie. Seems to be. Now then, the moment of truth, the moment of truth, I bet you love doing this, don't you Dory, in the moment of truth, when you're going to use this again after. I find it's that wretched plug hole in there. What it is, it's like an extension socket that is, that leads from the socket at the top there, and I always turn that off after I finish with it, so that has to be turned back on before that will work. Now here we go, that's better. How about that? Absolutely beautiful that. So it's been very easy hasn't it? We've done it in two videos. Um, I took my time with it really because uh, obviously I've been filming on here. Uh, we're still filming. I think my battery's virtually run down on my camera now so because I did my daily clean with it earlier and also that's been an hour and a half of filming earlier and the battery's almost flat so I've been lucky there. Right let's just coil this back up. So, uh, Mr. Hoover looks, we can expect a video from you shortly then in your uh, workshop of you stripping down and showing us the motor in one of your Electrolux 500s and um, show us what you're going to do to clean it up. I hope my video has been helpful and uh, I'm sure Dorian will uh, find it or anybody else that wants to strip one of these but I shouldn't imagine it will get very many views this Electrolux one because it's not a Dyson, it's not a Henry so no one's interested. <laughs> That's what I seem to find anyway. I have so many views on my Henry ones or my Dyson ones, but hardly anything on these old cleaners no one wants to know. All these young kids now, they, they've never seen these before, so... There we go, the Electrolux 560 in all its glory. I'll end the video now and uh, I'll see everyone else on the next video.